New Zealand is 12,000 miles from Great Britain and over 1,000 miles from Australia. However, fast air links have now placed New Zealand within a few days of the world's great centres. Yet shipping is still our lifeline. New Zealand's exports and imports per head of population are among the world's highest and our prosperity depends very largely on what we can sell overseas. And that depends on the land, the shape of the land, the rainfall, the richness of the soil, and above all, on the amount of grass we can grow. Practically all our stock lives on growing feed. We don't winter animals in barns, but we do go to a lot of trouble to find ways of growing more and better grass. We supply Great Britain with more butter, cheese and meat than any other country. Our chief producers are cows and sheep. Wool is the greatest source of national income. We are the second largest wool exporters in the world. As a contrast to sheep farming on the plains or on the hills are the true high country sheep runs, where the rough tussock grass does not support more than a sheep to five acres. But on a farm of 60,000 acres, that can mean a lot of sheep. And mustering is a big job if your farm is 30 miles long. Beef cattle are also raised in the rougher back country. However, the really rich farms are the fertile river flats that sometimes carry as many as seven and eight sheep to the acre. Here, 500 acres make a good-sized farm and a comfortably off farmer. Practically all farmers visit the nearest town at least one day a week for the stock sales or at times to see their wool sold. Once a year for the agricultural show, where they'll see competitions and demonstrations of all the things that interest them most. Nearly all New Zealanders will go to a big rugby football match and all appreciate the finer points of play. They get very excited about it, almost as excited as they do over horse racing, which is New Zealand's other great passion. Every town of over 5,000 people has a horse racing track and many horses are national celebrities. But however hopeful we may be, we don't make much money at the races. Our most important industries are those which process or utilize the things grown on the land. In the last 20 years, the range of our manufacturing has been greatly extended, and there is a growing tendency to make things instead of importing them. We've been building our own locomotives since the last century. As a link between the ports and the farmers, and between the factories and consumers, the railways are of great importance and have been built in the face of extraordinary difficulties in some parts of the country. Because of the many hills and mountains, air travel and transport is growing very quickly and internal air services are used extensively. From the air, the pattern of some of our New Zealand towns reminds us of the town planning of a century ago, when the early settlers tried hard to fit a gridiron pattern of streets to some very hilly localities, leaving us without much room in some of our towns. City dwellers very often get out into the country, and as there's one motor vehicle to every four New Zealanders, there's a good deal of travelling. We know our country well. Often we see the long-distance buses, which are sometimes the only link that lonely settlers have with the outside world. They carry their loads of passengers and papers and groceries and mail into some of the most remote back country. When New Zealanders want a holiday, they fill up their cars and flock to the tourist districts. Under strange Maori names in the thermal areas, they find the steaming pools and water boiling up through the ground as evidence of the tremendous energy stored within the Earth's crust. They go to the tourist hotels in the mountains, where there is first-class accommodation and skiing. They 
go fishing for trout in world-famous rivers such as the Tongariro, where they can be pretty confident of catching five or six pounder trout, maybe a 12 or 15 pounder if they're lucky. The sportsmen who want something really big try catching swordfish, which may weigh anything up to a thousand pounds. People fond of the sea may go sailing on many miles of sheltered waters, for the sea is always very close in New Zealand. And some are content just to walk out of their cities and into the dense forest on the hills. An outdoor holiday is not very difficult in New Zealand. But at the end of the holiday, it's back to the offices and shops and crowded city streets where the people are the people of any city, hurried, a little unsmiling, keeping to themselves. Often our buildings, especially those of universities, reflect our attachment to England. And so are copies of much older buildings in another land but our genuinely old buildings are quite different. They are the few visible remnants of the old Maori culture, still preserved in one or two show places. Here's a glimpse of the ancient community life of the Maori, a way of life that is still a strong force, particularly with the old people, and that still finds an outward expression in community songs and dances. Many of the dances you see today are made up of movements used by our ancestors to interpret our history and legend our love and hate, our sense of him. Titi Toria is a game played with sticks to the accompaniment of singing. Tahi Rua Toro. This is only for play or show. Maoris don't live or dress like this in everyday life. They're busy adapting themselves to a world of tractors and shops and the pressure of a different civilization. They have a living to make the same as anybody else. They're gradually absorbing much of the new culture, giving some of their own. Their children go to school with the children of Europeans. For every child in New Zealand, education is free, compulsory and circular, and has been since 1877. All children receive free schooling until they're 18, when they may be eligible for free university courses. They start kindergarten at three and primary school at five. All children get free dental treatment under a school dental service operated by trained dental nurses, a service that New Zealand has had for nearly 30 years. Under social security, the cost of having a baby in New Zealand is little more than the cost of its clothing. Also, under social security scheme, all New Zealanders are freed from the worry of obtaining medical and hospital care when these are needed. A major problem is housing. Not many New Zealanders live in flats. They like individual houses with their own gardens. People spend a great deal of time in their own homes and greatly value home life. Gardens are important. They tend to make our cities very spread out, but give us many trees and open spaces. We expect and have a high standard of living. In the short history of European settlement, not very much more than a hundred years, we've come a long way from the first landings around natural harbors to the establishment of towns, the development of transport, and the spreading out of settlement from the coast to the country. It is our primary production that has given us so much. Our prosperity still depends upon the productivity of the pastures and the annual growth from the soil. <laughs> 